Second interesting fact, the translation of the term roadmap into Hebrew is plural. It's the roads map. Okay, and into Arabic it's singular. It is the map of the road. So in Hebrew you are negotiating about plural roads, or might be negotiating one day, who knows. And in Arabic you are seeking the one true road, which as, as my informant says in uh, Islam has religious connotations. You know, we'll be on the right path to, to whatever. Is that intervention? No, because my informants tell me that the Hebrew language obliges the plural to be there. So it's not an intervention by any translator saying, hey, there are really many possible roads. Okay, it's the nature of the language that obliges that, and you can get around that with added explanations if you want to then intervene. But following the language conventions, I don't think is what I want to call intervention in this particular place. Are you with me? Okay. Um, the uh, third major change, and this one occurs all over the place in the famous UN resolutions and the rest, is the uh, presence or omission of the article. Okay, so uh, we have uh, uh, translations here. Uh, removal of settle settlement outposts in English, the settlement outposts in Arabic. Um, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, return, uh, recuperation of uh, all um, uh, Palestinian organizations, all the Palestinian organizations. The, the uh, Arabic uh, translations in this case insert an article which is not obligatory linguistically in order to claim that the part of English that, that could be read as some, okay, you return some of the land, you uh, return some of the uh, politi political organizations, but not all. In the Arabic translations, it is all. Okay? Uh, that, for me, is intervention. And I reflect on why I, I choose to call that intervention and not the other cases. Sorry, there are more examples, but I've just realized I'm going to be here for a long time. Uh, there are other examples, and it, it occurs to me that I would want to call intervention a situation, a shift, where the translator is aware of alternative possibilities, that is, they are not linguistically difficult to find uh, the alternative. Uh, there is a conscious refusal of alternatives, and it is for a conscious aim. That is not derived from the source text. That there is an aim, a purpose, a scopus, if you're from that side of the world, that is not derived from the nature of the source text. Now, if I can get those aims, purposes, scopoi, whatever you want to call them, and find out if they're ethical or not, I've solved the problem. Okay, are you with me? I'm solving the problem. No? Are you following? Because I'm here, I want the debate afterwards, that's why I'm here, so... Yeah, but are you following me? No. Of course you agree with me, don't you? It's obvious. <laughs> Hypothetical agreement, you know, let's, it's for the sake of an argument, let's go this way. Okay, so... Um, uh, it's a shift uh, that is consciously made. It's a conscious refusal of alternatives for an aim uh, that can be stated, if, if pushed, if, if asked. Okay, such as the, uh, the the Arabian Nights. You know, I asked, well, why did you do that selection? And, and an answer could be given. <coughs> That's fine. It's intervention. False arguments number one. False argument: All texts are interpreted all the time. So we are intervening all the time. So there's no such thing as special intervention. Translation is always intervention. All right? Why is that not a good argument? Hmm. Um, I think I just did it by demonstrating that there is non-intervention. Okay? If, if I can allow that there is non-intervention, I just gave you two examples. Uh, I, I have deflated that argument that intervention is there all the time. Enough said. You with me? Good. Uh, you're against me? Okay, we'll come back to that. There's um, an another um, 
a version of that is that we're interpreting all the time. Uh, you can say, I choose to interpret this text the way I like. Okay, I have a right to my interpretation. I will interpret this text the way I like. Uh, and that solves the problem. No, it doesn't solve the problem, because that statement precludes communication. Uh, if you say, this is my interpretation, and that's what I'm going to translate, you forget that you're engaged in an, a communicative act with other parties. It can never be an entirely individual decision that will never be entirely justified on individual criteria. Okay, individu individu individualistic interpretation precludes communication. I move on. Bad argument number two. That was one in two parts. It's a version of the same. Uh, uh, people say to the interpreters, to the translators, I'm sorry, I use translation as a general term, okay? Um, you must do what you think you is right. You, oh dear me, God, I've got to get this. You must do what you think is right. Okay, it's an existential approach to ethics. I can't tell you what is right for you. I can give you some things to think about, but you must decide. If it feels right for you, then you do it. Okay, and if you feel you have to intervene, then you do it. <coughs> Bad argument for the same reason. It's a purely individualistic argument, and that will not help us in communication of any kind, let alone cross-cultural communication. Bad argument number three. Descriptions will show the truth. We have long thought in translation studies that it's enough to go out and get data and look at what actually happens in the translations, and then we can show how much intervening actually goes on. Okay, that uh, there was a little descriptive translation studies project out, out there somewhere, uh, which is still there, and uh, uh, some kind of revelation knowledge will be created from this. That's not a bad answer, but my, my retort is, is the following. Uh, by my definition of intervention, I'm referring to things that are not, are te not textually available. Intentions are not textually available. Aims are not textually available. You're saying, well, how can I study them? How can I analyze them? I can't and I don't have to. Because ethics is a discourse, in this case, addressed to the people acting. Those are the people who will have the intentions and who will have the aims. They've got them. I don't have to pretend to have them over on this side analyzed on any textual basis. Ethics is not a, a question for quantitative textual research. And that's a very important point to make for those of you in translation studies. Ethics cannot be based on texts. Now I've lost all of you. I'm not even going to ask if you're with me. But there's an argument there, okay? Bad argument four. Tell translators to seek loyalty. This is Christiana Nort's argument. Okay? You've got all these people out there, they're doing different things. Look for compatibility between them and be loyal to the author and the reader and your client and yourself and anybody else you can find at the same time. Answer, impossible. Possible, perhaps, in a calm, peaceful world. But the world we're living in this year is not calm or peaceful. And I'm given to accepting conflict as a general situation of all cross-cultural communication. Don't tell me about loyalty. It's a lot harder than that. Next argument. Only work for people you respect and who respect you. That is, if you don't have mutual respect between all the participants in the Communication Act, don't do it. Good argument? Well, it falls by the same thing I just said. Because we're working in situations of conflict, I posit. Who was it that said that, that diplomacy is a continuation of war? Or, or whatever. Um, you know, the tells it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you cannot assume mutual respect. You cannot just work for the people you happen to like. You can't go along and say, 
uh, here's a list of the baddies of the world, do not work for them, Don't, they will never get translated and that will solve the world's problems. Uh, the baddies this week include, I don't know, I haven't checked recently, um, um, the CIA, uh, Walmart, um, um, who else we got? Oh, Israel, too, yeah, this week. Okay, and it might be your country next week. Okay, conflict is no, nobody has a monopoly on conflict. 